He didn't come here to practice. He's gifted. I don't bring here people that's going to practice. I bring in here people that know how to get this done. I believe that he has a special gift and an anointing for this house. So I want you to stand to your feet and give God a great big hand praise for this prophetic, evangelical, overseer, Ferris Lord. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Now in a few minutes you'll understand why I'm telling you to praise him like this. But somebody open up your mouth and give God a Uh oh, there's something shaking right here. Take me a second.
I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I have some CDs here of messages that I preached after service. You can see me if you want to take advantage of receiving one of these. If they're only a love gift of five dollars. Meet me out back. You can get one of these. I gotta preach. I don't have time to do the info words and all that stuff. Where God is right now, I don't have time. Get your Bibles. Remain standing on your feet. I do honor the Lord to be in a place that I've never been before. I thank God for the apostle of this house. Can you help me celebrate the man of God? And I also thank God for Lady Richardson. Can you pray for her? When I received the call to come here, and God knows his timing. Yes, sir. God knows his timing. Yes, you can't come before time, can't come after time. Right. You gotta go in time. Yes, sir. And when I received the call to come here today, I knew that it was God. And there's a word that has been in my spirit. I've been traveling across the country with this word. And when I got the call, now please understand, this is not just some warmed over word. I promise you that. But it is a word that the Lord has prophetically declared to me that is going to release many believers into a lifestyle of miracles. Okay, that's only about two of y'all that need to have miracles in your life. But the Lord has given me, and literally I've been preaching what's called the high praise revival. And in this high praise revival, the Lord gave me to know that there are miracles, ladies and gentlemen, that do come by way of prayer. Prayer is a vital part of our walk with God. You cannot walk with God effectively and not have a prayer life. Come on. Amen. There's no way around it. Now let me just say this so and y'all just hang with me for a moment. Those of you that you know you feel like you gotta sit down, I'll be standing longer than you will, so it will be alright right? That's alright, Reverend. But watch this. Too many times the church has taught prayer as a duty and a responsibility. Church, you need to understand that prayer is not just a duty or a responsibility, it is an opportunity. It is an opportunity to communicate, watch this, first and foremost, with the God that created the universe. And do you think about how big that is? Right now, there are billions of people in this world right now, and yet God hears your voice. I know the lie of the enemy is that God doesn't hear you, but I'm talking to somebody right now, and this is, I know that's just a small word, but that was for somebody right there. God said to tell you, I heard you. I'm hearing God in this room. And let me take it a step further. God says, sometimes I have not moved for you in the timing that you wanted me to move because I wanted to see whether I could trust you when I didn't do it when you expected it. Can I talk right here? Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years to get a promise. Can you hold? I said get to talk to the God of the universe 
But dear woman of God, you get to talk to your heavenly father. Yes, sir. Yes. See, one of the problems we have is many people have not had good experiences with their earthly father. Many times your earthly father was not there for you, walked out on you. And because of that, you relate that relationship to your relationship with God. So you struggle with spending time and talking to God because you don't know what it means. To relate to a real father. Yes. 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 Amen. But I hear God say, tell them I'm a good, good father. Yes. Yes. I know when to bless you. Yes. And I know when to spank your butt. Yes. 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 Oh, you don't act like he doesn't have to spank you sometimes. But he loves you enough. See, when God starts correcting us, it's out of his love for us that he corrects us. That's a good shout right there, y'all. See, we don't shout off stuff like that. We shout off of getting a million dollars. No, you need to shout because God, if he's still correcting you, that means you're still in his hand. That means he has not let you go. Some, oh Lord Jesus, Pastor, I'm in something, Apostle, I'm in something right now. But somebody had to go to jail so God could protect them. You sit up here wondering, you sit here talking about free Pookie Man. No, sometimes Pookie need to stay in jail so God can deal with Pookie and deliver Pookie. I hear the Holy Ghost in here today. Sometimes you just gotta be, you gotta accept the fact that God knows how to deal with who he's gotta deal with. So, we have, we have prayer. And prayer is a great thing. It's an opportunity to commune with your Father. Watch this. And it teaches you who you are. While you learn who he is. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say that again because somebody didn't get it. It teaches you who you are while you learn who he is. Because there are a whole lot of believers, baby, who don't even know who they are. They don't know who they are. So if you don't know who you are, you become subject to what everybody else says you are. I can't get a talk that church. I hope I don't offend anybody. So they call you a whore and you live like a whore because of what they said because you don't know who you are. They call you a drug addict and you live like a drug addict because you don't know who you are. Did the preacher just say that in church? Yeah, why not? They say it, they, they say it, and okay, okay, all right. I got young folk in here. They call you a thought. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need some, I need some sanctified, some saved young folk to say, I'm not a thought. I belong to God. For those of y'all that don't know, T-H-O-T. I ain't gonna get into the details of the definition, just know it ain't good. Oh, 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 oh. Amen. 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 <laughs> Go with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 17. Remain standing on your feet just a few moments more. Uh, for the sake of expedition, I'm not gonna read all of the verses, but I'm going to I'm going to talk about the verses in between. Is that alright? Help yourself, brother. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. If you have it, would you say amen? amen. If you don't have it, you can say hold on a minute. See, some folks don't want to say hold on because they don't want people to know they didn't. <laughs> 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse number 1. It reads, Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And were gathered together at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and pitched between Soko and Ezekiah in Ephes Damim. 
And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other and there was a valley between them. No, verse number four, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Notice verse number five, and he had a helmet, somebody say a helmet, of brass upon his head. Pay very close attention to that, we're going to come back to that in this message, all right? He had a helmet of brass on his head. Mm-hmm. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Verse 6, and he had greaves upon a brass upon his legs, and a target of brass on his shoulder. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his head, the spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine, and your servants to Saul? Choose a man to come down and fight me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then I will. Then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Verse 11, when Saul and all of Israel heard those words, of the Philistine, they were greatly dismayed and greatly afraid. Verse 16, and the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. That's a long time. Amen. That's a long time. And please understand, ladies and gentlemen, biblically, in biblical numerology, the number 40 is the number of divine testing. Amen. They were being tested. Uh, Look at verse 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the hosts were going forth to battle for Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. I'm going to jump down to verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth. And he's a man of war from his youth. And David, pay attention right here to verse 34 on down. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him. And delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of who? The uh huh. David said, Moreover, the Lord. Oh God. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. I'm gonna fast forward very quickly on down because it gets to the place in verse number 42. And when the Philistine looked about, he saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said, am I a dog that you come with me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me. I'm going to give your flesh, flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. But I come. I come to you. I ain't running. I ain't running. I come to you. Where? In the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. Verse 46. When? This day. This day. Uh oh. 
What, what are those next two words? This day. This day. I need some this day for the saints in here today. The Lord will deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take your head from you and your carcass of and the, I'll give the carcass of the host of the Philistines unto the fowls of the air and the beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Father, bless your people as we receive your word. God, seat my mouth with the tongue of the wise. God, I pray that the hearts of the people are ready to receive what you would say in Jesus' name. Amen. On your way down, would you help me to bring emphasis to the point of my message today by saying these words, the exchange, the exchange. of a eulogy. Of a eulogy. Right. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Say that again with me. The exchange, the exchange. of a eulogy. Of a eulogy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Now understand, ladies and gentlemen, that many times in our American language, there's a word, most of the time when we hear the word eulogy, we think of at a funeral. We make the mistake of thinking that something or someone has to die in order for there to be a eulogy. Matter of fact, when someone gets up and they preach the quote unquote sermon, at the funeral of somebody, it is called delivering the. Oh, come on, help me preach it here. It's called delivering the eulogy. eulogy. But the truth of the matter is, the word eulogy does not mean that it does not require that someone has died in order for it to be delivered. I could stand here right now and speak well of any one of you. In fact, the word eulogy, at its very root, means to speak well of. So I can speak well of you and deliver your eulogy while you're sitting here today. Now pay attention to that because in a moment it's going to bless you. Now I'm going to work just a little bit and, and just stay with me right, be like a postage stamp, stick with me till I get where I'm going. <laughs> There are two Greek words, and I don't do a whole lot of talking about Greek and Hebrew because people don't always understand that stuff, but this time I've got to do it. So y'all promise y'all gonna hang with me for just a moment? All right. There is a word, there is a word, there is a word uh, in the Greek when we start to look at the root of the word eulogy, there's a word called eulogetos. Somebody say eulogetos. Eulogetos is a very important word because Eulogetos is a word that is only, it, it represents to speak well of, it represents to say something nice about somebody who's watched this, their nature is inherently worthy of praise. Amen. Now, Eulogetos is only used for God. Only used for God. Why is it only used for God? Because, come on, y'all, can we be honest? Not one of us in here, our nature is inherently worthy of praise. Because no matter how good you are, how cool you are, how down to earth you are, it does not matter how many Facebook friends you got, how many Snapchat buddies you got. Oh, come on, somebody. Your nature is still not inherently worthy of praise. In fact, if it wasn't for the blood of the Lamb, you wouldn't be worthy of anything. Oh, I can't even talk that, church. If it wasn't for the blood of the Lamb and for the grace of God, none of us in here would be worthy of anything, especially being praised. Amen. So eulogetos is a word that only goes to God. Now let me work this because when we start talking about eulogetos, the only way if I was asked to deliver a eulogy for somebody, if there was a body laid across here, I could not deliver a eulogy unless I had real experience with the person. Come on, man. 
Y'all gonna catch me in a minute. I can't eulogize a person if I have not had experience with the person that I'm eulogizing. I can't speak well of the person whose body is up here if I know nothing about the person who is laid across the front of this church. So what are you trying to say, Long? I'm trying to tell you that the only way you can eulogetos God is that you have had experience with God that allows you to speak well of Him. Amen. Can I dig a little deeper? For those of y'all deep folk that say I worship in my own way, you'll probably change your mind after today. Man. You know why you don't change your mind? Watch this. What would it look like if I were called to this church? Somebody said that so and so passed away. We need you to come deliver the eulogy, and I get up here looking like looking like Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say anything. All I do is move my hands and wave my hands and make it look like the person was good. Y'all know how they do on TV, right? Yeah. You know how Vanna does. <laughs> it does not make sense for me to stand here if I've been called to deliver a eulogy and just <laughs> y'all would think I was a fool wouldn't you <laughs> the only way I can eulogize that person is I've got to open up my mouth and use words to speak well of them I Y'all do remember Amen. 
when Samuel the prophet came to the house because God had rejected Saul as king. Samuel came to the house and he was ready to anoint the next king. And the Bible said he went to lay, he went to pour the oil on one of the sons, the oldest son, and God said, no, it ain't going to work. God stopped up the oil because he said, that's not the one. All the other seven sons passed by Samuel and it didn't work. But the one who was on the backside. Yes. Amen. I'm preaching to people today who your life, you've always been told you were a nobody. You were told that you weren't amounting to anything. You, you were told that the best you'll ever be is this much if you ever become even that. And yet God said, that's the one I want to use. I'm talking to somebody in here that God says... You're the one, you're the one, you're the one. I know what the world says, I know what the people have said, but God said you are the one. You ought to touch yourself right now and say, I'm the one, I'm the one. Everybody ain't got to like me. Right. Stand right there. All right. You get mad because they don't like your Facebook posts. <laughs> They don't like you and they're behind the scenes talking about you. Listen, you ought to celebrate the fact that they're talking about you. You ought to celebrate the fact that they got something to say about you. But the fact that they got something to say about you means you're on their mind in the first place. They tell you you're not important, but you must be somebody real, real important if they bother you and coming after you. So you might as well give God glory that God is doing something in your life. If God wasn't doing anything, I could see. But God's doing something. You may not be all that just yet, but you're becoming. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a church right there that could say, I may not be there yet, but I'm coming. I'm coming along. I'm on my way. I may not be there yet. I may not have my PhD yet, but I'm working on my associate's degree. I'm working on getting my certification. I'm going back to get my GED. I'm working on getting my high school equivalency. Why? Because I may not look like much to you, but I know when God gets done with me, he's going to use every experience of my life to cause me to prosper. So, David's back on the backside of the mountain. He gets anointed, and he goes back, and he keeps serving. I don't have time to work on that on the concept of you gotta keep serving. When you're in church, serve. That's right. When you're in the house of God, serve. Yes. Don't get offended that they don't like you. Don't get offended that they don't let you sing your song. Just serve. Yes. The people who God is gonna raise up are the ones who are anointed to just serve. Yes. Serve. Yes. serve. There are people who never thought I stand where I stand today. But you know why I stand where I stand? You know how I ascended to be an overseer? Not because I'm somebody great. It's because I learned what it meant to serve. Amen. Your blessing is in your service. Amen. <laughs> This. While David was serving, he had an experience with a lion mm -hmm. and a bear. Amen. Yes. Did y'all hear me? Yes. He had an experience with a lion and a bear. While he was serving, what was he doing? He was keeping his daddy's sheep. He was a shepherd, Amen. keeping his daddy's sheep. And while he was serving, a lion came at one point and a bear at another point to try and take what belonged to him. Amen. Amen. Oh God. That's good. Some of y'all got some lions and some bears that keep coming trying to take what belongs to you. 
The devil, Jesus, I hear the Holy Ghost. The, the, the devil's been telling you that he's going to destroy your marriage. You're going to end up in divorce court. The lion and the bear is coming to try and take Jesus. what belongs to Preach you. Jesus. Every time you think you're about to get ahead in your finances, here comes the lion and the bear to take what belongs to you. Every time your children start getting on the right track, one of them gets on the right track, and then here goes the other one acting crazy. Amen. The lion and the bear coming to take what belongs to you. Yes. Am I talking to anybody? Yes. Amen. Yes. Can you identify that there is something called a lion or a bear, so to speak, that keeps coming to try and take what belongs to? Amen. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But the Bible says these words it said David went out after the lion and said, You can't have what belongs to me. Preach long, I think I will. You can't have what belongs to me. I need to talk to some people that will make up in your mind that the devil can't have what belongs to. Let me get it right here. I got a problem with some of y'all saints. Y'all wanna know what my problem is? When you were out there in the world, when you were out there doing your thing, when you were out there slinging, when you were out there with your boys, when you were out there with your girls, if they rose up on you, y'all were grabbing bottles, y'all were grabbing knives, y'all were grabbing guns, you grabbed whatever you had to grab to handle business. But somehow when you get in church, you act like you don't know how to stand up and fight anymore. I'm just going to pray about it. Yeah. <laughs> now let me be clear. When I say fight, I'm not talking about fighting people. Because in church we could not let me, oh, I'm going to get in good trouble right here. In church we're real good at fighting people, but we don't fight them face to face. I hear the Holy Ghost, I'm sorry. What we do is we go talk to sister so-and-so about what brother so-and-so did to us. Amen. 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 Why is it so quiet in Zion all of a sudden? <laughs> you get offended with this one over here, but instead of talking to this one over here, you talk to, instead of talking to the one that offended you, you gonna talk to everybody else about the one who offended you. And then you got the nerve to puff your chest out talking about, ain't nobody, no, they, they, they not scared enough to come bother me. Ain't gonna say nothing to me. Well, listen, you scary. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in this, but let me just say this. You have to understand, you don't have to be confrontational to confront things. You think, all right, because y'all don't want him to talk about y'all people. You don't have to roll your neck and snap your fingers and do all of that to confront things when people do stuff to you. You don't have to be confrontational just because you have to confront some stuff. Sometimes you just need to say, listen, can we talk about this? Amen. Amen. And when you get done talking, don't just go, I'm going to help somebody right here, and this will help somebody's marriage, by the way, don't just go to be understood, go with the heart of trying to understand. That's what we do. When we get in arguments, we want folks to understand our point. You going to hear me. Let me tell you what I got to say. But you never take the time to listen and to see what their point is. You have to understand, I don't know why, 
I'm in this pastor but this is for somebody. Do you not understand that you and the other person come from two different backgrounds? You're two different people and because you are, you see things differently? So you have to learn to respect the fact that you're human. So if y'all have a disagreement, the better thing to say is help me to understand. And even if you end up in a disagreement, you still disagree. Respect the fact that they are human and they have the right to see things the way they see them. That's right. That's right. I mean, the book does say follow peace with all men, does it not? I'm trying to help you have peace in your house. I'm trying to help you have peace on your job. Trying to help y'all have peace at school. Because you know these jokes are crazy around here. They shoot. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, God. And so watch this. I didn't forget about the lion and the bear. David had a wrestling match with a lion and a bear. Now let me just say something to somebody right now that you need to hear. And that is the fact that you got to quit despising the wrestling matches of your life. Amen. 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 I can't tell you the number of churches I go to across this country where people are complaining, oh my God, I'm going through, oh my goodness, I'm going yeah. through as a part of life. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. Y'all not here. Amen. 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 I, I'm just going to give up, man. I'm, I'm, I just feel like I need to give up because I've just been going through so much. Going through is a part of life. That's right. Amen. Amen. As long as you're here, you will deal with problems. Amen. So suck it up, stand up, and understand what the Bible says. Oh, I'm going to help somebody right here. Understand what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them. So, am I in the book, y'all? Oh God. 
help me in here. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I come against the spirit of intimidation that has been trying to run against some of you. God said you've been trying to go back to school and the spirit of intimidation has jumped on you. Made you feel like you can't do it. I came to encourage somebody. Don't you let a nine foot giant stand in front of you. Somebody in this room, you've been believing God for a house and you've been afraid to go after the house because your credit is so jacked up. And you said, surely my credit will never get right. Well, I come to tell somebody in here, don't you be afraid of a nine foot giant because you're for that promotion, but I hear God say go apply for it, go apply for it because if you go apply for it and you take God with you, now make sure you've been performing well on your job as you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go trying to get a better job knowing you ain't done your job. Say that, God. Say that. Amen. They ask you to do something, that ain't my job. Somebody ain't gonna like me when this is over. Yes, sir. Preach. But you tell them, oh, that ain't my job. I ain't doing that. No, the Bible says these words. Whatever you do in word or in deed, do it heartily as unto the Lord. You are not doing it for the boss. You are not doing it for your parents. You are not doing it for your teachers. You're not doing it for your husband. Oh, God have mercy. Can I leave right there for a moment, Pastor? You ain't doing it for your husband. For your wife, you're not doing it for your husband or for your wife. If you if they made you mad yesterday, you still get up and serve today. When you look at it as not I'm serving them, but I'm serving Jesus, yes, how would you act towards Jesus if you were in the house with Jesus? On your job, how would you act if Jesus was your boss and not the boss you have? Well, you don't know how, how mean and how nasty you are. It does not matter. You're not serving them. Amen. You're serving I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord just said, you better do what you need to do, and you better work well, because somebody is watching you. Jesus. See, a lot of times, when I go preach somewhere, Apostle, I don't always end up laying hands on folk and prophesying, but while I'm preaching, the prophetic word starts going out like this right now. It's hitting somebody right now, because you don't understand that on your job, somebody in the higher-ups have been watching you, even above your manager, Help, help 
us, Reverend. I don't care how she provokes you. Are you going to beat her this time or are you going to walk like God? Amen. Are you going to provoke and be nasty to your baby daddy this time? Yeah. You gotta check yourself. Amen. Am I doing it unto the Lord? I don't care if he was the worst baby daddy in the world. You still honor God, not him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh, let me, think, let me think a little more. It doesn't mean you gotta get back with him just because you're kind to him. But what you're doing is setting yourself up for God to bless you. Oh Lord Jesus. For God with the man he really wants to send to you. I told you the lion and the bear was leading to a moment. You may have had a bad baby daddy, bad baby mama, but if you treat them godly, God is setting you up for somebody who's supposed to be in your life, who will be a blessing to you and not a curse. Can I get somebody to hold back at the other day? In that moment. 
that he was eulogizing his God. Can I give y'all two more points and I'm going to get out your way? Number one, it's got to be based on your experience. Everything David was saying was based on his experience. It was based on his experience. Stop looking at and magnifying the hell that you've been through and start celebrating your experience with God. What has God done for you? What has God brought you out of? What has God delivered you from? What has God healed your body from? You want to open your mouth and eulogize him. Watch this. Watch this. Because on the back side of the mountain, remember I told you it was every experience was leading to a moment. When you're in obscurity, when they don't know who you are, they don't know your name, when they don't like you, when you're hidden behind the scenes, it's setting you up for a moment. Amen. David was behind the scenes worshiping. Watch this. And that experience that he had in worship with God built his relationship with God. Amen. 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 How many of you would tell your secrets to somebody you don't know? You're only going to tell your secrets to somebody you really, 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 really trust. Amen. Amen. Well, you can't tell it to them if you haven't had relationships with this one. Amen. 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 Relationship with it. And you know what? I, it's so funny because so many believers, they, like I said, they get in there, oh, I got all these problems. Well, when's the last time you prayed? Amen. Amen. When's the last time you read your Bible? Amen. Without being in church? Amen. 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 All right. Preach right now. Amen. 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 You don't know God's voice because you ain't been in His face. Amen. You don't know what you're going to do because you ain't been in His face. Amen. Well, I don't know what the, I don't know which direction I'm supposed to go when you ain't been in this face. Amen. Amen. I, I gotta hit somebody right here. You have not been in this face. God says if you'll get in my face, you'll learn my voice. Amen. 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 Because when you get, when you spend time in prayer, I don't care if you dedicate 15 minutes a day. See, everybody say you got to make it to an hour a day and so on. Okay, get there. But start somewhere. Amen. See, I'm anointed to help believers grow into disciples. Amen. Just because you came up here and gave the preacher your hand and gave God your heart doesn't mean you a disciple. Amen. Than you do about what's in the book. Amen. Amen. Ouch. I can't get a helping church up in here. Amen. 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 The lights are testifying. Thank you, lights. <laughs> but the problem is, we've not been in his face, so we don't know his voice. So we don't know, we can't trust him. Amen. Amen. He's always been trustworthy. We just don't trust him because we've not taken the time to get close to him. When you leave here today, just say, I'm going to give God 15 minutes a day of my time. Start there. Amen. Let me hurry. 
And so everything that David did, he spoke out of his experience. Now watch this. When you have experience with God, it develops your confidence in God. And when you get confidence in God, you begin to develop a self-confidence that's godly. Yeah. in yourself when you can believe in the God that backs you up. Yeah. How? I, I feel a good holler right here. How do I know I can believe in myself when I believe in the God who backs me up? Because I can do all things. Y'all not going to talk to me up in here. Through Christ that strengthens me and I'm connected to him. I've got relationship with him. I can do all The Bible said that David was out there and he eulogized God in front of his enemy. You got to learn how to eulogize God in front of the devil. And now as I close this thing, y'all, you got to learn what it means to open up your mouth. Now let me tell you something. When I say eulogize God, it does not mean just hollow or scream. You can't even say hallelujah. You can't even say thank you, Jesus, because that's not an expression of your experience. But when you eulogize God, you start talking about the stuff that he's done. You've been my healer. You've been my way maker. You've been, I can't get a talk back, church. You've been my provider. You've been my door opener. You've been my God. You've been my help. When you start talking. Well, the Bible said, come on, bring me on in, baby. I'm ready to ride. Where's my drummer? Tell him to get there. I'm ready. Is that A flat? That's A flat. That's A flat? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me get in my A flat. Ah, yeah, that's what I want. All right.